I'm going to put this message in a bottle. And I'm going to cork it. And I'm going to put it out in the ocean. For you to get. Now, some of you may get this maybe several months later. Maybe a year later. Maybe two years later. I don't know. Because it takes time for people to come around the corner to want to, one, to learn something. And for two, it's a lot of information out here in the world. So it will take some time. And I'm pretty sure by the time that you reach this, I'm still making content. Whether a year, two years, three years later. And, uh. To let me know that you got this message, go ahead and like it, share it, subscribe it, and uh, take a look at that book, 2020 America Rise or Fall Hard. Yes, 2020 is not the year. 2020 is the vision. 2020 is based on having a clear vision to see what you do not otherwise see. Because not only does it uh, apply to your vision, yes, it also applies to what's going on at that time in 2020 and above that. This is, uh, this is for men and it's also possibly for women who may be interested in knowing how the game isn't going to fur out for her. But before I get into the message, my message just always starts off with a story. And in the story is the lesson itself. I uh, did some work on my car. I was <laughs> exchanging some things, doing things. And I uh, drove past this wheel shop place. And I saw this guy outside doing a little hopping back and forth in his car, but he was actually adjusting his stereo system in his car. And it was a, it was a loud, nice, nice sound, you know, a little kicker box. I used to do that myself. It's entertaining. It's a power in your music. A lot of you are very aware of that. And uh, I looked at the car and the car was a really old, <laughs> I mean, just not your typical classic car, Cadillac, you know, big body car that most people will probably uh, keep in the garage for a little while and just work on it every now and then and bring it out on a Sunday. Not something like that. We all understand that. That's, that's all clear and fair. No, but this, this car was, uh, just your regular old SUV type of car. And uh, whatever a person does to what they want to do with whatever vehicle they have is it's their business. It's not Morpheus's, so I'm not judging them based on what they want to do to their own car. That's not it. The fact is the lesson of what it is, meaning the entire picture when you are conscious when you have a third eye when your pineal gland is where you need to be at in your energy you see things that uh, most people don't see you you see things that that person themselves don't see it's like uh, lots of things that I'm able to talk about children family spirituality the future so things like that I'm able to see it because I have my instincts versus those who are not. You could be in that situation. You could be in that that marriage. You could be in that circle. You can be in that house, that square, that job, that place. And I may not have set one foot into it, but I will know exactly what's going on in that place or in your time or in the circulation because I have instincts, because I have knowledge filtered through intelligence and the wisdom. And of course, there is a bit of experience myself. Being there doing that actually helps as well 
with the knowledge. So a lot of people may say, well, you don't know Morpheus because you just don't know. No, I do know. Trust me. It's just in our personal world. That means when you are at home, whatever you do with your personal time. Lots of those things are and is very obvious with the fruits of a labor in your country. The fruits, the, the fruit do not ever fall too far from the tree. And oftentimes it becomes obvious. It's just we overlook it. But I'm not going to go too far into that. In this measure, while the guy was fiddling with his vehicle. And I got to think and I'm saying he's put this nice stereo system in this vehicle. And I'm thinking I look at things future term as in a. Uh, why invest in this old vehicle that eventually is going to break down and or he's going to have to buy another vehicle and then he's going to take the he's going to need to take and reinstall his stereo system from that car to the next and uh, keep it moving that way because it's going to it's going to break eventually somewhere unless it's in the garage and he don't want to drive it and just modify it, which is rare for some people. Usually they'll drive it and it's an everyday driver. But I was thinking, I said, wait a minute. Me, on the other hand, I would take the system and hold off. I'll hold off on the system, put it in storage or maybe my garage. I'd put it somewhere and wait for the right vehicle that's going to be on the road for a little bit longer. Something that's a lot newer, something that's a lot more forthgoing, giving. More, it makes sense to invest in something that's going to be there for a while. Although we cannot, we know, uh, predict the future. We can't do that. But when you are investing in something, at least that something, which is newer, has a lot more life. And that's what kicked off this audio. Because I drove past him and I, I was thinking, okay, that was cool nice that he put that in the system the system in his car but when i looked at the front of the car the bumper was all bent <laughs> like the it just i just wouldn't even put another quarter on the car i wouldn't do it it will be a gasser put gas in it and uh be a work truck but people are willing to do this and this was a, a man at the time and i'm thinking okay that is what some men do that is what some men do they will invest in something all their energy all their power see men you men that are listening yes we are creators and yes we have the ability to do what we can do as men build bridges we are creator creative and we have imagination but oftentimes we put it in the wrong places men we're not investing our energy in the right places and I'm going to get to that in just one moment. And the reason why I said it might be for some of you women is because uh, I also on the drive through drive back. I was uh, <laughs> going the speed limit. And uh, while going the speed limit, maybe one or two miles uh, above or lower, just staying at that range. I looked in my side rear mirror on the right side and the road was getting ready to end because I know this road. It was getting ready to end. That lane over there said it was merged to the left practically. Okay, it was going to end. And I see this car on the right hand side speed up at least doing 60, 65, something like that on the 40. But it was moving at a very fast pace. They sped through and uh, they merged over in the front, not in front of me, but several cars in front but they didn't merge into that lane no not into that lane you would think that they would merge in that lane they merged all the way to the left hand lane that is on the left side of my car and i'm thinking okay they're in a rush where's the be at like what's going on over here these people are you know this the normal scenario that probably you would think of like okay something's wrong with these people and I drive further up and get into the, I was going to make a right. Okay. And I, I meet the person at the light. Obviously they're going fast for nothing. I have explained that math to y'all several times, how that works. 
And when I drive past, I wanted to see who this passenger was, who, I mean, the driver. I wanted to know who the driver was. I always do that. You know, I always drive past to see who this person is because I do my statistics. So y'all think I joke. Y'all think I'm just picking on people all the time. I do my statistics for myself so I can teach you. <laughs> I do this for myself. I want to know who, I want to know the gender. I want to know the person. I want to know the hair. I want to know what culture. I want to know it all. I filter it all, all that one time. And I keep that in my conscious and subconsciousness and I write it down. So I drive past and uh, <laughs> it was a uh, it was a woman in the driver's seat. And I told you about this in the audio before that women drive like uh, they are bat out of hell. You know, they drive like they are on fire. They drive like the police. They will drive and wait till the last second to push on their brakes at the light. You know, and usually when it's raining and wet, I told you about this in the audio as well. And also witnesses that this car ended up sliding right in the middle of the intersection during a rainy day. And I want to figure out who that person is. And it was a woman in the driver's seat. And here we are again, another woman in the driver's seat. Nowhere to go. Just impatient. Just driving as if uh, their uh, as if their um, asphalt is on fire. <laughs> like just and it's it's not judging it's just accepting it for what it is so i'm like okay fine fine i'll just leave that to be i said i'm gonna i'm gonna teach my class and i'm gonna put this stuff in the bottle and send it out in the river so you can get it and i also want you to keep that in mind because that's going to be it it is it is part of the lesson here Getting back to you men, when you are investing, let me tell you a little something about uh, my life, a little something about me, okay? And uh, it may not be fit for some of you who are uh, Christians, obviously. It may not fit for a lot of men who, uh, <laughs> sadly, raised in a single home by a single mother, okay? That's not dousing you single mothers, I'm just saying, there's a difference how men raise kids versus women. Okay. Because what I'm going to say is that uh, my life, I don't, I don't date long term. All right. Uh, not married, not interested in being married. You can't pay me to get married to you until the marriage laws change until the Western civilization get their head out of their asphalt. Then Possibly it may be a way, but there's something else that you need to see with this. Why this audio is important. Because it's called investment in something. See, when I go home, I invest in my time. In me. I build, I build up what I want my world to be. I go where I want to go. I eat what I want to eat. I am not obligated to no one nor am I ever interested in being obligated to anyone. Okay. So I could, uh, I can date any girl I want to date. You know, I can donkey dunk whenever I want to. I can put up all types of posters in my house. I got vases. I got a nice foyer. My kitchen is spotless and clean cook in there anytime I want to entertain groups of people practically almost all the time. Nice studio. Studio is huge. Speakers everywhere. I got my own floor if I want to entertain uh, guests. It's a very marvelous thing. And uh, I can call up any girl I want to call up. Don't have to worry about some girl looking or uh, luring over my phone. Giving me a scrawl in the back of a in the back of the room and when we're out at a party somewhere when there's other girls flocking around me and I could take my pick of any one of them without being obligated to any one of them not interested because I know what type of pick of the litter that we're dealing with today so I'm thinking I invest in me I invest in what I like I invest in my cars I go out to the derbies I go out uh, I told you about that one of my audios when I was uh in y'all language blessed i would say i was gifted and fortunate to meet a friend of mine 
who let me borrow their Ferrari for the show. And I have to need anybody or a chauffeur or someone there who was worried about how many flies I was going to catch. <laughs> and I think about how fortunate I am. I mean, I just think about how good it is. It's I'm living the life, but it took now. But you must know it took sacrifice. It wasn't easy because the sacrifices was sitting down and shutting myself up. I had to destroy the old Morpheus to create the new Morpheus. I had to fight the machine. I had to be on the edge, on the edge of losing my mind in order to be where I am. I cannot tell you how many times that I have yearned night and day, day and night to be in a companionable relationship, to meet the proper type of women that would stick that will be suitable for my life i gotta tell you how many times where i have when i was once religious yes i was once religious had conversations with god almighty as you would call it and ask questions why why god why am i single why can i find me a companion why can i find what's that word love respect and loyalty why when every girl would come and go and it wasn't because uh, i wasn't companionable it's just they their standards was different i didn't tolerate it didn't tolerate them and their uh their new way of thinking in the westernized world so they would come they would go they would come they would go leave <laughs> And so I'd find myself on the often actually trying to search, thinking of dating sites, thinking of uh, uh, go, going to talk to a priest, <laughs> even speed dating. I can't tell you how many times I meet people and their first question, they'll look me up from the, they'll look at me from the bottom of my shoes to the top of my head and they'll ask me, they'll be like, Morpheus, why the hell are you single? How? It's impossible. You got this. You got that. You are this. You this. You this. You that. And you that. I cannot believe it. Then when I say, well, and what I mean by single, just don't have a steady companion. Okay. Just because I'm single don't mean that that's a bad thing. You know, single being just an individual. I'm just about myself, basically. Okay. Just don't. I, just, I don't have a companion. That's what that means. Let's get that straight. <laughs> but they would say it's when they ask me that and I tell them in return, no, I do not have a special someone. They will flip on their head and swear that I will be lying to them because, you know, I don't have a big head, nor do I need to say anything about myself. They're just say it just don't seem right that you are single. There has to be some girl somewhere or several girls who are at least trying to break down your door or put a minky in your drink at least to try <laughs> because there's no way to the opportunity like you pass. There's no way it, they have to be stupid. And there has been many women who was married who said that right there in front of her husband and of her husband just agree because the boy or the uh, the man would pretty much understand my status. He's like, yeah, this. I know plenty of women, if they saw you the way that you are, uh, they would not let you even walk away without at least getting their number or making you permanently remember their name. <laughs> okay. But as time has went on and I begin to study the red peel, I begin to understand why. See, the way the universal God teaches, and I told you this before. The way the universal God teaches is different than what you think that it would teach you. For you who are, again, religious, <laughs> okay, and thinking that you got to go to the church, to the pastor, and all these prayers, mom, my, 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 to make yourself look silly. Nature teaches you that. And when you, we, some, it, and I'm not going to get into it, right? It's called instincts. And a lot of us don't have it. When you have instincts, you can see things that you never saw and your instincts is blurred by indoctrination. 
when someone when the, someone programs your mind and tells you a myth or a gossip that isn't factual, it blurs your instincts because you go by the gossip and the indoctrination, basically. So truth can be in front of you, but you would defeat truth with your programming. All right. And some people may say that your intelligence will conflict with your instincts, but your instincts is always correct. Right. Your your intelligence is programmed by the indoctrination. What intelligence do, as I told you before, is when information come to you, intelligence break down the information to churn it out, to to uh, to filter it out. So you can have knowledge, meaning to know a thing. So therefore, when you are fighting your mind from indoctrination and you do, you uh, challenge uh, real life and information coming to you, that's actually true. And you modify it through the modified intellect that you have by your indoctrinated and programs and gossip and tradition. So forth, so on. Then that truth becomes manipulated. It becomes emogumated. It becomes mutated by your programmed uh, intelligence that you're thinking is right, but it is wrong. So therefore your vision of instincts is gone. You don't have instincts there. All you have is manipulated reality living in preception. All right. Now that I laid that down and made clarity. So as I begin to gather this and change things around and realize that even my vision was wrong fighting against the machines and wasting my time over and over and over again just wasting my time like why am i wasting my time chasing you don't have to chase you don't chase you don't you don't try to make people you can't make people want you i wasn't trying to make them what i mean is you don't find love love finds you you don't think, oh, because I'm online, I'm doing this and that. I'm hunting down a husband. I'm hunting down a man senseless. Senseless. <laughs> See, and there is another thing as well on top of this where there is some conflict here because I know you. Okay. Is that some woman, women will always argue as well. Well, I had to do this online and I did this to get my husband a boyfriend. But what women don't understand is they have an easier time than men because there are lots of program women who think that men have to do the approaching. That there are plenty of men, uh, more than 80 percent of them who are and is supposed to do the the buying, the paying, the uh, um, the approaching, the approach game, what you call it. That's what women expect, because on the westernized civilization, there are too many blue pill betas. There's too many men who don't have this message in a bottle. There are too many blue pill men who are programmed to be the pack mule, to be the woman's stepping stone. Whereas he is the one that men who are getting the red pill and who are servicing themselves and who realizes real life is struggling against. Red pill is struggling against blue pill. Red pill men make tau alpha, masculine men who are real leaders who is the diamond of the rough who are the kings of kings amongst you is having a hard time because there are more blue pill beta than there are them so the game is rigged so it's a struggle got that straight so therefore even if women will say that they are able to they can make an attachment they are they can go find them a man in two weeks whereas men will take two years to find that proper one woman is because the game is rigged it's because blue pill will do that you got 80 percent of men who will approach you got 20 percent of women who will approach men do the math <laughs> do the math do the math you will get the desperate one. You will get the ones if you're working around them on a constant basis. Yeah, the woman may say something. She may flirt with you. Yes. You know, if it's a friend of the family or a friend of whoever's a friend and that friend's always with you or around you, just so happen to be there, there is going to be a possibility there. But it's still hard press of her to make the introductions because of the program system 
of the westernized traditional backwards walking mindlessness. So therefore, getting down to the details, men will still lose at the end of the day. So the nonsense when you hear women say online is the way to go. Yes, I can find. Yes, you should do some approaching. Yes, I would love a man to walk up to me and say something to me because that makes me think that he's just he has confidence in, and he's just uh, he's comfortable in the skin. Ya, da, 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 da. Don't listen to. We are at a conflict in the Americas today in the Western civilization with the inter with the intellectual filtering of information between man and woman. So that's why I don't listen to what women say when it comes to that and other things. OK, you can't listen to and you can't listen to the other team that has an 80 percent advantage over you and get tips from them, because if you get tips from a team that have 80 percent advantage over you, you are a moron because you're going to lose because they're that's the reason why they have 80 percent advantage over you, because you take in tips from the other team. <laughs> do do you get that? I'll write it on the talk board real slow and you can figure it out for yourself. So therefore, the times in my life was inadequate. So moving forward, as I begin to study and I was gifted with the information and the knowledge, I was gifted with the knowing and it put me in a place of rest, a place where I have found out that and have known and have studied that I, yes, am the prize. That I don't need them like that. And not only did I not need them like that, they have proven on their own that they didn't want to be needed and that they didn't want to need themselves as far as the opposite sex. So it made it easier for me to detach myself and just concentrate on me, stay on my grind, build my house, build myself, build my identity, build my my way around existence. Not a bad thing. It's just the way it happened by my own hands and by their hands as well, which they delivered the red pills themselves. Women are so kind. I love them so much where they just give it to you. That's the adorable thing about the westernized world. They you don't have to if you wait long enough. As soon as you ask for something real, as soon as you ask to break away from the matrix, the moment you ask a question, the teacher will appear. That's it. The moment you ask the question, the teacher will come from somewhere, whether it might be a rock, a stone, your situation, your health. And the teacher will present to you the red pill. Women have given the red pill for a long time. Men just wasn't able to see it because their instincts was screwed. You see. So while I was out there dating and chasing, there's many women who pulled, they reached their hand in their pockets and pulled out a handful of red pills and said, here, take this. And fed into me transforming even more into who I am, Morpheus. This made me stronger. <laughs> and now I sit actually very comfortably. I'm really nice when it comes to uh, Relationships, when it comes to my reflection of myself, my mind, my spirit, my physical body. And you would think, oh, I have something to do with money. No, 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 because these are priceless. It's not about money. I didn't say that. It's not about money. It's not about business. It's not about, oh, I'm financially set. No, 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 no. That's that's only one percentage of it. Because money can't buy you loyalty nor love. OK, so don't even go there. It's not even about that. It's about being spiritually set. It's about not yearning for something that's going to hurt you and seeing life for what it really is. So let's go further with this. Y'all got the hint with that. OK, and just a lesson here. I know men now who use their energy like the guy at the car, put the stereo system in this rickety car who at the age 21, 23, sometimes even 35 depends who think that their life must be uh, capsulated or perfected and topped off as you do your fuel or your gas or you know your water glass or wine or something like that. We'll top it off with a wife, <laughs> with, with a, uh, uh, sometimes with a house or a home. 
and uh, they invest in it. This this thing that's like this rundown car, like the guard, the guy that put the money in the stereo system in the car, wasting his time. I mean, just it don't matter if the stereo system is old or how cheap the stereo system is. Your time is more precious than money. Time time is valuable and you can't get that back you lose five dollars you might gain five dollars somewhere eventually but time won't be returned to you you got to fight for your time you have to build your time build yourself and uh when he has to move that stereo system from that car to another car that's going to be time to do time to rewire time to adjust the speakers it's just time consuming i know that i'm into the automobiles it takes time it's just it's a headache the rewiring in the stereo is like why would you do that to a junk car why don't you establish that in something that's going to be longevity now there's some men who will build a house I'm getting back to the house and the houses are i know several guys who brought run down homes that they had to invest in with their bare hands and their money and getting uh, bank loans. You would think, well, not a bad idea. I mean, you just think, oh, they, they got their home, they got a house. Not, well, yeah. But here it is time, time, energy invested in this thing where they're tapping away. And uh, it'd take a good five years, sometimes six, depending on how much time they have to put this house together. Or three years or something like that depending on how bad shape it is that time will not be returned that time will not come back to them and uh while they're doing that they're not thinking about how much time has gone past and uh they could have spent that time in a more valuable place than uh, trying to build a home or a house that way me, on the other hand, I'm more interested in saving my time and my energy by getting this place, which is practically already together, already renovated, already where it needs to be. And if I'm looking at this place and it looks nice and it's dutiful and I'm satisfied with it, most times that's all you really need. It's good enough. It's good enough. A lot of times guys get in a relationship with this girl and she's... 29 between 29 and 28 okay no 29 and 38 29 and 38 and there's there's a few who is 27 so you can say 27 to, to, between 27 and 38 and the men don't they don't do their they don't do their just diligence they don't receive the message in this bottle and they work on this house to try to tell this woman what he expects you know, and matter of fact, they don't do even that. <laughs> they just accept me for who I am. And they get in a relationship with this girl because she looks good, smells good, whatever the case is. Because she has what uh, he likes. He's attracted to this, to this person. And uh, what happens is, and you know this, it fails. Because the, the rate of uh, divorce, the rate of uh, broken relationships is on an all-time high. So whether you like it or not it's going to fail and it's failing for a reason that i'm telling you now why it's failing topples over and uh there's no future for them <laughs> no future because he gets this house and he wants to fix it he wants to at the last minute that is you know he even if he does try to get in the house and you know you get the realtor and whatever else the case may be in the future stuff start breaking apart it start tearing down but unlike uh, an average house that um, won't be as atrocious as the average person, the average person that this man gets with, such as a relationship with a woman, it's already on the verge of deterioration between that age 27 and 38. And it's been uh, <laughs> high mileage from their experiences in the outside world. So automatically, it's going to have uh, plan obsolescence. It's on plan obsolescence in your face. And what they do is they, they run around the house trying to fix it. This girl, whenever something happens, they'll try to fix it. Whenever there's a situation, they try to fix it. Whenever there is an argument, they try to fix it. Whenever she don't like something, he try to fix it. Take her out. Valentine's, you know, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, 
uh, uh, can't think about that, but um, anniversaries, there we go, that's what I'm looking for, man, it's been so long, <laughs> anniversary, I haven't ever had an anniversary of anything, anniversary, not even in my dictionary, amazing, anniversaries, they try to do everything they can to make this girl, what, what's the word, come on, come on, mind breaking people, come on, come on, Neo, happy, that's right, Try to make this girl happy. So they're going around the house, trying to clean out the gutters. They're trying to cut the grass. They're trying to go out there in a John Deere tractor, trying to do everything he can in his nine to five job to be what she wants him to be. All in all, what this man do not understand is in reverse. Is this woman trying to be what this man want her to be? Most times it is no. Most times she's already, man, let me tell you something, man. When it comes to how a girl is raised versus a boy is raised, because our chemistry is different, because our mind is different, because we are made different regardless of what the world, the westernized world want to tell you otherwise to make you some twisted, mutated creature, you are different. You know, if you wasn't born with her hair, her DNA, and every other part that she had, you are not her. She is not you. Ying and yang. There are things that men can get over that women cannot get over. There are mindsets that women can get themselves into that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. That is how they've been raised by their dad, what type of arguments they have with their brothers, okay, what type of uncles was in her life. Everything plays out like that. Whereas some men, when they're in their logic and they are doing as they should for themselves and they got their head on straight, some things is just like a rush of water over his shoulders and he'll keep it moving. Which generally is what real life is supposed to be about. If you're not emotional, if you are the emotional type, you can't get over anything. If you are the logical, intelligent type, which is dealing to filter out the information through intelligence of what is worth keeping and what's worth letting letting go, you see, you can survive. You can make it. You will realize that holding on to the past isn't going to make a future. And you would think about that through your your probable and possible uh, properly aligned intelligence. So therefore, when you live in a life of emotionals, and you live in a life of uh, non-reasoning, you're going to grow up and you're going to be a problem for your companion. You're going to grow up and be a problem for those who are around you because you're going to keep crying for mommy and daddy. Same things you did when you was 12 year old. You're going to be doing the same thing when you are uh, 21, 31, 41, 51, 61 because you didn't grow up yet. I seen a man just the other day was uh Standing in my neighborhood, very unique neighborhood that we have here. And I pulled out of my driveway, <clears throat> my Lexus out of the garage and I'm pulling down and he was standing on the sidewalk and I left my Lexus out there because I was getting some stuff from the Lexus and adjusting things in the garage. Right. And the whole time I seen the guy just standing there, he was just standing there. I'm not worried about if he was trying to, uh, what do you call that? They, uh, scope out the place you know trying to peep out what he can get and what he can't get. I wasn't worried about that because I, I got things taken care of and I got cameras in several places just uh I don't I do things with modesty I told you about that I hate technology so everything I do is at a minimum very much at a minimum and I just let it sit there and just linger in this case I need it but when it comes to my own personal protection I'm not worried about it let him jump as soon as he jumps you know, I got a uh, I got a frog catcher, you know, and I got a fly swatter that uh, <laughs> if he's a pest, I can just swap. OK, it's done for. I don't have that to worry about. OK, and that's that's with everything still in my pocket. <laughs> so I'm just curious. Like, OK, why is this guy just standing here? So the moment I uh, leave the house, get in the car, and drive away. He uh, weighs me over. And I stopped and I'm like, okay, what do you want? What do I do for you? He said, well, can you give me a, can you give me a ride to the store? You know, that's around the corner. And he told me what the store was. 
And I was thinking to myself, uh, interesting, he... <laughs> wait, let's say, wait a minute, the store is only like, uh, like six, ten, something minutes away. If he's walking, he'll get there maybe 20, 25 minutes or less, something like that. I was going back and forth to my Lexus for at least an hour and a half. And he was standing out there for quite some time. And I'm thinking, I said, this guy, either he's his mind is in the wrong place or he's up to no good. But as I heard from several people in the neighborhood, his mind's just not in the right place. So he wasn't trying to scope out anything. He wasn't trying to do anything that's going to jeopardize anybody. He just he was babied when he was a child to the point where his logic and his sense wasn't there. Whereas he could have walked. He could have walked. He would have been at the store and back at least twice already. Twice. <laughs> By the time I got done hauling stuff from the Lexus to the garage, could have been finished. But he was at it. And this guy, listen, you think, oh, well, you know, well, you know, Morpheus, are you sure that he wasn't? I'm sure. Absolutely. Sure, because they know the guy. We've seen him several times and he stays with somebody in that neighborhood. And he's always bumming for things. He's always asking for help. He's always just very lax of days. And he's of age. He's of age. He's in his uh, he's in his 50s. 53, 52, something like that. Grayish hair, very skinny. Every now and then you see him with a, a uh, with something to drink in his hands. Drink every now and then. <laughs> and I got to thinking like, this guy has no accountability for himself. And I'm pretty sure that he's used to, he's used, not only is he used to that, but as he was a kid and he was growing up, there were some adjustments that he never made in his life. He never made those adjustments, but now he's dealing with the consequences. Now he's he's in the mindset where he needs to be an adult and he can't handle it. So he's sitting up there asking for people to help him when he can act otherwise help himself. <laughs> and so men have that problem, too. It's not exclusive to just women. There's some men and you think that, well, only women are going to have to deal with their, uh, you know, their so-called uh, feminist ideology when they get older and they're sharing cat food with their cats when they're 54. No, there'll be some men who's going to suffer, too, from their ignorance as well. You know, men, they're dealing with the same issue when they don't listen to the uh, when they don't get the memo. They don't get the red pills. They'll be standing outside just like that guy. Can I get a ride to the store? Like, dude. You should have walked to the store a half an hour ago. You would have been there. Why are you waiting for somebody to pick you up and take you there? And I'm not going to be the one. This Lexus ain't for you and nobody else. This passenger seat's going to stay clean. Nobody's asphalt ignorance sitting in it. <laughs> so the key of this service to you is getting back to this, this conversation that we're having. Is that men, when they get into their marriages, oh yeah, here we go. I often see these guys and they're not happy people. They're not, they're not happy. You, you think, oh, marriage is the best way to go. No, no, here, it, it, not really a good thing to be dealing with in the 2020s. Not really a good thing. Because a lot of revealing of what these women are men are truly all about is actually coming to surface meaning it's not about past it's about their loyalty now to each other it's about who they really are it's about it's about what they really love and how truly committed they are to their companion is and if there's a future that they are desiring because i hear a lot of women say often and i'm not in a relationship with them they say well i want a child i want to have kids in the future while she's being a stripper or while she's, you know, selling herself, whatever else she do at that moment, she'll say, I want to have a child in the future and I want to settle down and find me a man. And uh, at that age, I'm looking at them and they're 28, 29 years old. Yes, believe it or not. Yes, they are doing it, especially around that age in their desperate attempt for survival. And uh, I have to laugh at them because in my, you know, as a teacher, as a teacher, Neo, I'll ask them, why would you consider that after you done gave the best parts of your life away? I'm thinking, have you concerned yourself with how your man would feel? How would he feel? 
He said, well, I'll think about that when the time comes. That's their that's their response. I'll think about it when the time comes. <laughs> really? As if we are God enough to tell nature to wait. And that's what's going on. But yet what happens is men get with these women anyway. OK. And they they marry them up. You know, and some of them, they they meet their diary in early. That means some girls, they do all that stuff earlier in their life. And then they get with men and men want to try to dress them up and fix them and invest in them. Right. And not knowing they're investing in something that takes work. Yeah. They, men got a word called high maintenance. Right. And uh, <laughs> it's a shame how men think nowadays. I feel sorry for you guys. And think it's a good thing or by saying high maintenance, think as well, you know, I'm just going to accept the fact that she's high maintenance because I got to do so much just to keep her interest. I got to do so much, you know, just to keep her in my uh, <laughs> keep her in my Cadillac, my Cadillac life and not think about changing the, the uh, perspective. They marry the girl, they have children. And that's their limit of success. That, that's their cornerstone of life. That's what they was taught when they were kids to do. You grow up, boy, to be a man. And when you do, you go and you get married and you have kids and you call it a day. You know, seek for some type of retirement and uh, pass on your legacy and that's it. <laughs> As if that's it to life. Do you not understand, men and women, that life is more than just that there's lots more to experience out of yourself than there is for you to limit yourself see the key is when you're going to be with somebody and and here's the point here and i'm gonna get back to that when you're going to be with somebody it should be something what i say worth investing in whereas if the car he had a speaker system in was a newer car new paint nice you know low mileage you know, it, it, it like I said, no matter what happens in the future, we can't predict that. But at least the investment is in the right place where he doesn't have to readjust the stereo system no time soon because the car is going to be a while before the mileage get on this thing. It's going to be a while. He don't have to wrestle fixing this thing. That's practically where it's supposed to be. <laughs> but I have to. But yet men will take up the the mantelpiece of the women who the women the the many of them okay there's exceptions to the rules but that's for a different channel all right who are already adjusted whose vision is already um programmed as he accepts the programming and he brings the programming into his life and he invests in it with his time, his energy, but that still doesn't mean it's not going to be obsolescent. Do you get what I'm saying? It's still going to fail eventually, whether he likes it or not, because it's not his signature. It's not his time. When you get into a car that's used, it's not your fingerprints on the steering wheel. You didn't put the miles on that car. The car has, well, let's say, for example, some of them. The car is as a 170,000 miles on the speedometer. And some people say, well, it depends on how you drive it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes, Neil, it depends on how you drive it as well. But also the indication of the high mileage, not just age itself. See, and here we go flipping to something else because it's just it's an apparatus of so many things. I have to keep myself on track. This is why age is significant when it comes to men and women. Men age is sort of irrelevant because they don't have that advantage as a young teenager or child or kid. Depending on how he was raised. He don't have that type of advantage of uh, being like a, a Venus flytrap. Okay. Women do at a very early age. So a 20 year old man and 20 year old woman don't line up with each other because she has more of a track record than him. You see. Her age really means something. Not well, it don't mean nothing at that time, but for him, he's just a child. For her, she's an adult. He's he's still beginning his life. He's still trying to figure out how he's gonna get his uh how he's gonna swim. You know, she's been swimming since she was 16, 17 years old everywhere. <laughs> so 
<laughs> and again, yes, it depends on how she's where she's where she's coming from. But still, she can sit there and flies will come to her. Not men, not boys. Okay, it's a struggle to try to figure out uh, even where he's at. It's like bulls just wrestling with each other in a grass field until they figure out where they need to go to make their own grass field. Okay, but with the 170,000 mile car, okay, high mileage, you would say, well, it's how it depends on how you drive it. Yes, but for some women, if it's 170,000 miles, that's that's a very leery, leery red sign altogether, especially if the girl is beautiful or if she looks good. Why are you single? Why aren't you married at this particular age and time of your life? Again, between 27 and 38. Like, why? Why? What's going on? And then she's standing there. She has two kids. You're like, wait a minute. Where, where is he at? Oh, he's nowhere to be found. I got two baby daddies. And uh, oh, 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 uh oh, wait, um, excuse me. But of course, men don't don't calculate that. No, there's no calculation there. Um, there's and uh, <laughs> there's no calculate, no logic to filter out. OK, no logic to boost up the intelligence to filter out the information because of the way that they were raised and on the opposite side of that some women don't comprehend that themselves because they end up trying to get a boyfriend or a husband and he don't stick because of something that she's doing wrong or because of maybe her personality or maybe again she don't know that she has been deceived now let me give you an example of this because i don't want you to be misled neil let me give you an example okay it's like this I met a girl who was used to roughneck guys. And this girl was 21 years old. She's used to guys fresh from grade school, middle school, high school, freshman year, college. Okay. Like I'm used to guys who are rough guys who are just, I'm all about me type of thing. I'm used to guys who just don't give a, they just, you know, they go, they just done it. They just do whatever they want to do. That's what she was used to. She meet me, classy guy. Got my act together. Mind is clear. Same as I'm talking to you now. <laughs> Sensible dude. Guy who's uh, on his grind, you know, on the verge, moving different places and taking care of himself. To her, that was unheard of. So we're in the cafeteria one day and she wanted to get my spiel, try to fill me out sit there and have that conversation and uh, that's when she began to spill the beans she's like wait a minute you're just different than the rest of them and uh, I don't you know it's just I don't think that a relationship with us will work because you're just such a different guy I'm so used to this roughneck guy the rough men who just don't care just I just I'm just used to those guys because it's just there's something about them that I just can't get up. And of course, we do the math about that. I'm not going to even get into that type of chemistry in this audio. Y'all know about this. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't care. You know, do what you do. I'm on my grind anyway. I'm making my own path and I'm not interested in wasting my time. I'm just that type of guy. So, you know, walk out the door. I'm not worried about you. You know, goodbye. No tears on me. So I get a call from her, like it was, uh, I think several years after that. She ended up, uh, yeah, she had a child. Child was like almost a teenager or something like that. You know, 12, 14, 14, 13, 13, 14, some years old, something like that. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, she told me about the child. Like, oh, congratulations. Good job. Yeah, you got a child. Okay, nice. You know, how? Where, what's going on with you? Where's your husband, boyfriend? You know, where's that? No, he's not here. Now, what? What are you talking about? No, no, he's not. He got locked up. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, he's got, he's got like 10, 10, 12 years because he did so and so and so. And I, I can't be with him anyway because he was violent. <laughs> like, wow. I was like, and uh, she's talking about she want to change her life and do this. And that, this should be an asking what I was doing. And she's looking for a good man. She's looking for somebody like me. I regret not being with you. And I should have. Why did I? You was right there in front of me the whole time. Y'all know. You know how the story goes. 
regret, 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 mistake, 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 illogical, not filtering out the information, just going through the feeling because he's a bad boy. Now, I'm the bad boy. Now, I'm the car that you'll see going down the street. You'll be like, dang, that's a bad car. That's a bad looking car in a good way. Now, I'm the bad boy now. <laughs> and I'm untouchable by her. Regret, regret, regret. Senselessness. So, her programming stopped her. Same as the guy. Like That's what happens. That's the... That's what happens. Instead of looking longevity into the future to say, okay, can I settle down with this person, with this guy? Is he uh, suitable for me and my kids and my family? They only care about most times what's suitable for their emotions instead. Their emotions, you know, their emotions talk for them. So, Therefore, the emotions have no logic. Emotions have no logic. So it can't filter information. And it's not churned out through intelligence. It's churned out by emotions. Therefore, it's going to fail 99.9% .9 of the time. So you got to get your emotions in check. So therefore, investing into something that's going to last long with a high mileage, <laughs> it's not like there's no, oh, it's a pretty car. It has a uh, 200,000 miles. It's a pretty car, though. They just repainted to make it look good, but it's rust on the inside and everything. Engine never had an overhaul, but yet you put all your life in it and hope for the best that it's going to survive. While your life is going downhill and you're struggling. And the, and the bad part about this is men and some women. The bad part about is is this. You will invest in this person and you wonder why five years in your marriage or relationship it's a sexless relationship you wonder why you scratch the back of your head and be like whoa you know i don't feel the same way i used to for her i wonder why then i'll be the first one to knock on your glass window and say because you're smart ask google google how come i fell out of relationship with her then google will turn to you and send you to red pill content and make towels and tell you well, because you didn't get the memo and because you just don't understand what you're getting into because you was misled and you can't be helped. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> when you didn't look into the future because your time. Listen, when you don't think your time is precious, you don't think you're precious. And so your time ain't going to benefit you and you're going to waste your life, which is on the bandwidth of time. And then you're going to regret yourself. And then now you in a committed relationship that you can't get out of without sacrificing something. That is not the type of life that I want to live. That is not that is not a good situation to be in. That's not a good feeling and it's not even funny. And I'd rather not joke about it, but it's happening. Because it's not it's not good for you. It's not good for you. It's good for me. But it's not good for you. It's good for me because I'm not committed like that. I don't buy myself down to a, a plain obsolescent contract. Okay. I date who I want to date and I don't go by, Oh, you better. It's better to marry than the burn. Fornication is a bad thing. Well, I'll be fornicating and free. You're going to be bound married and uh, with a uh, romance list relationship with great clouds all the time where somebody's always going to be looking over your shoulder. Can't go, can't do everything that you want to do because she's always there. And when you want to switch up, you can't because you're still with that old car of 170,000 miles or more. Okay, that you are, you've lost a, you're, you lost a luster for it a long time ago. And the thought of repainting it or even washing it is beyond your imagination. I don't have that to worry about. In my garage, it's always fresh new vehicles. And if I don't like it, I can send it back and get me another one. That with the leather is fresh and smells great and new. <laughs> you can't do that. Because you want to invest in something that's not, you know, <laughs> why, would you, why, why, what's the point in it? What's, why would you put your manhood, your energy, your time, your, your ability to, uh, to create mountains if you want to and build mountains. Okay. 
to say, well, you know, I'm just going to settle down and you know, I'm going to jump over the broomstick. I'm going to do where well, I'm going to do the thing, man. We I've been knowing her for 10 years. I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to do the thing. Like, <laughs> and now you're the guy with the ring on your finger, nice creased white shirt walking around and, you know, you settle, you done, you finish. That's it. And should you ever try to find another relationship, it's going to have to be in the closet. Me, I don't have to have, I don't, no, no closets for me, out in the open. <laughs> Front room, bedroom, you know, patio, it don't matter. My studio, okay, you can't do that because you wanted to limit yourself into, see, now I can understand, I told you this before, before you start getting upset and mad. If she is promoting you, that's a different story. Same as, it, it's reverse, it can be for women as well if you reverse the gender if that person isn't giving you what you need to be the best that you could be then they are going to be an anvil for you they're going to be holding you down but if they are it might be worth it that's what men has been looking for from day one is somebody to take care of the other end of the labor which is what companionship is all about then it's worth investing in. okay i'm getting some out of this you know, I keep putting new wheels on this car because I'm driving the car <laughs> through uh, all four seasons. Rain, snow, sleet, hot heat. It, and it's surviving. It's doing what it can. It's getting me from plan A to plan, plan B. It's getting me to point A to point Z. Most times you struggle more than what's necessary in order to get the point A to point B. And you're stuck on uh, your destination at the same time. You're not getting where you need to be because you're stuck. Because y'all keep going, y'all keep going back and forth with each other. Y'all keep struggling with each other, trying to struggle just to make life work for two people who's supposed to be a team. That's supposed to be your team. That's supposed to be your companion. It's supposed to be that person who, um, who is willing to share the labor with you, the labor of life. Not wrestle with you, not become the labor itself of life. And a lot of the women and at a certain age, they're beginning to realize the window that they have crossed over between the ages of uh, 21 and 20, 21 and 25, I would say 21, 25, and 26. Where at that time they've been churned out to uh, chase career, go other places, run around and uh, and uh, the, to be the, uh, the spotlight of every man's delight. And therefore, when it comes time for her to invest in a house, a home, or you, so to speak, there's not much there. There's not, you have a glue system, which I'm going to call it. You got a glue system in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. And uh, this glue will tether you to your companion in the future. This glue is supposed to be there to make sure that your relationship lasts. That is your donkey dunking, your energy, your cookies, your time. The best years of your life should be for them. It should be for that one person that you want to be with for the rest of your life. If I was going to be with somebody, I would do the same thing because I want this thing to last. So I want to make sure I have enough fuel in my tank to last. But y'all, as you, uh, you, you sell your oats, you go out and party, frat parties, you know, tattoo yourself up, eat, swallow, eat all kind of crazy stuff. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I want to find me a boyfriend. I want to find me a good man. And y'all get together. There is no glue there. The only glue that you might have there is some financial respect. Only fine. That, this is why a lot of women, when I talk to them, I say, hey, you know, what? I tell them to spill. I would tell them to spill that marriage do not benefit men. but Women get to benefit from it. It's a financial contract. And they'll still say, well, I still want to get married anyway. I still want to get married anyway. It's just the thing to do because she don't care about you. It's just a financial stability. It's just the financial. It's just to have this man. Should she not want to work? And that's another thing. I heard a woman talk about that, too. She said, well, you know, I just want a man who has a really, really good job. So should I get pregnant? I can just stay home and he take care of everything. And she'll never get back to work. He, you'll still be a support backup plan for her. You'll still be. Y'all been 
You got to you got to understand the game plan that's going on. She'll burn her wheels between the ages of 17 to some some of them 31 years old. She'll burn it all up, pour out all her water, her cookies, her fun time, donkey dunking, all that stuff that you should be doing with her. That's for you. She gives all her, her prizes and glory away to other men who aren't going to be the permanent blue pill that you're going to be. And you come along when she's at the ends of her wits, where she's uh, realizing that she's not uh, young like she used to be. And she's like, oh, I'm getting serious now only because of age, not wisdom, just age. Age will slow many people down, if not all of them. OK, just a lot of them <laughs> still like the 54 year old still walking around like a moron. But still, it will slow them down. And then all of a sudden she's like, I want to get married and settle down with someone. I want to permanent boyfriend for the rest of my life no she wants somebody to give her leftovers to that's all and most times it's going to be that's why she wants the marriage anyway so she do all the career all the fight and all the so-called i'm independent and strong then when she get to that point she'll give you finally at the last end your opportunity to be with her after she get done having her fun and that's just going to be the financial stability for her and then y'all invested it and you put money and time and energy and then she divorced you too when she's 42. <laughs> and then you tell her, well, Morpheus, I just didn't understand. Now, you know, of course you didn't understand. Of course. Of course, because you've been taught to just buy used cars and <laughs> you could, there, everybody else drives your car. Everybody else is driving it. Everybody else drives the car. They got the car. They got the keys. They scraped it up, all kind of stuff. Then you finally get it. <laughs> you get the pink slip to it finally and then you say oh i'm gonna have this for the rest of my life no no you're gonna be no you're gonna be maintaining it for the rest of your life you're gonna be working on it for the rest of your life it's gonna be in the shop for the rest of your life <laughs> it's like if you're not understanding this this is a solution to why divorce happens often why relationships aren't lasting because we're walking around like peacocks we're not you're not understanding anything that and then you hear people say well you know you need to give your oats away before you get into a relationship but like what are you serious that's the i told you this before my audio that neil that's the time for you to let loose that's when you take the nun the nun um hat off and suit and revere your inner stripper with that person who you're going to be with for the rest of your life. Because that's the fuel right there. That's the fuel. That's what it takes to survive because you're going to be satisfied with that one person. Like, oh, I like this. It tastes good like sweet wine. And you're happy with it. And even sometimes maybe addicted to that person because they're good enough for you. They're good enough for you. But when you flip flop, when you are everywhere, when you already traveled the world three times, five times, eight times over, and then all of a sudden you want to be in one house, one place with one person for the, no, you're not going to be sad. It's not going to happen. You're not going to be satisfied. So you're going to be waiting and depending on that person to play clown for you, to put on a red nose and show for you around the world because that's what you are used to. And you men sign up for it. And because you're not the person that she used to be with that chauffeured her around the world uh, uh that donkey dunked with her until her throat hurt <laughs> okay you and you expect for the relationship to last what type of intelligence is that how does that work you you let me know how that works because as i'm speaking right now i i'm enjoying my life in my time i love the time i spend with myself and with a, pu a beautiful little thing that will come and go. I'm good. Now, the trick is you say, well, Morpheus, do you want this girl to stay? What if she, if that's a, <laughs> but that, listen, and, and here's a kicker for you all who's listening. Okay, Neo, definitely for you. Here's your kicker. Here's your reality that some of you can't choke to accept, which is the red pill I'm giving you. If she is going to be, she is going to be. To be or not to be. You want me to slow that down? To be or not to be. Should have put some echo in the background. Okay, that has nothing to do with you. Ooh, yeah. 
whether y'all like it or not, it has nothing to do with you. Nothing. It has nothing to do with Morpheus. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. Or your personal opinion or your feelings. Ooh, yeah, I went there. That's the kicker. It has nothing to do with you. If that person's going to be proper in your life, they're going to be proper. Whether you like it or not. They're going to be the thing that you need, you like, you desire, and they're going to be right. You, they don't, they're not going to need your guidance because they are exactly what you need in your world. You can't help but think about that person. They will stick on you like your skin no matter how many times you try to wash them out. But you got to be careful because your emotions can get involved as well. But oftentimes it may, it just may not be an emotion. It just be that person is proper in your world. So therefore, as you are perusing through your life and you are succeeding, you go in places, that person will be there as well. And not need to uh, not need to be taught anything. They are as is. They are the, the, the great car that's going to last for the rest of your life. But it's very rare. And it's only one out of a million <laughs> nowadays anyway. So I have nothing to do with me. So uh, contrary to what you may think, contrary to what you may think, I'm enjoying the fact that I'm living real and not living in a hopeful false reality of hoping that something's going to work when it's supposed to work on its own. You state what you request, what you desire and what your standards are on and you keep it moving. If they can't apply to you, apply to it, keep it moving. There's no need for me to stop my progress or be miserable for something that's not going to be proper for me. If anything, I am rejoicing the fact that there's nothing there that's going to stick. That lets me know I don't have to invest in something that's going to waste my time. But you would often wonder, <laughs> you, 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 you say, well, OK, Morpheus, then why is it that guys are still getting married like this? Guys are still, you know, relationships are failing. I don't understand. Why is relationships failing? Why? Tell me this. There are two things involved. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. There are two things involved. I'm going to tell you right now. This is why I wanted to put this in this bottle and put it in the river and let you get it as you've gotten it now. That maybe you can help somebody else out. It is the donkey dunk and it is drugs. Those are the two things. Those are the two biggest in the top 10 list. Why relationship? Yeah, you say, well, there's feminism. There's this and that. There's, you know, movements. There's, you know, all kind of confused. There's you know, Instagram. There's Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's part of it, too. All of that is part of it. But the thing that will destroy your instincts quicker than anything else is the drugs and the donkey dunk. That's right. Because a lot of men, they're only interested in just that, but they marry it for the rest of their lives. And it's not what they thought it was because it's no different than the drug itself because it makes you feel good. The chemistry, it's all about science and chemistry. When you're with this person, there's a chemistry reaction. There's a scientific reaction. Your chemistry uh, pops off several color codes within yourself, depending on the person that you are with. If you're with that person for too long and they are not proper in your life, what will happen is when you used to have lots of bright colors in your chemistry and your uh, your blood flow for that person and your emotions, energy, so forth, so on. OK, it turns gray where there's no more colors there. It's just gray. Sometimes dark gray. And when your colors for that person turns completely black, it's over with. That's when that's when domestic violence happened. That's when you just. You hate that person. That's when you get into serious fights where you just want to hurt them in the worst ways, taking a child away from them, you know, trying to take them to court and so forth. So on. you just be uh, dra dragging them through there, uh, gossiping about them, talking bad about them, bad reputation because your emotions is black now towards that person. But most times in dead relationships and in marriages, it just turned gray because there's nothing left. When you are younger, you have your cookies, you got your energy for those people for life itself. And you haven't been everywhere. You're not donkey dunking with everybody. You got a lot to save over for them. You got a lot to save over. Your colors are bright and blinding. It's bright. Like stars. And it's just like stars. It's just bright. You can barely see it like blue, yellow, red all over the place for that person. And most times you can see the gleam in their eye. They smile at you just like what that spark will come from. 
because they got that for you. They got the juice. They got the energy. But the more people they they <laughs> the more they give it away. I already said that. But with the drugs and the uh, donkey dunk itself, they miss the drive and the purpose of being with that person. They miss the true reason for being with that person where they are overlook the person's failures, faults and flaws and small seeds. That will be the thing or those will be the things that would destroy the relationship because after they get enough donkey dunking in and they see the person for who they really are and when tough time comes they can't handle that person and they don't want that person next to them to the point where they you know they want to sleep on the couch in the front room they want to um tell the person don't touch me <laughs> you know um it'll be sexless for a month two months two weeks then it, to the point where it'll be they will begin to uh Say, let's take a break from the relationship. During the break, they just want to find somebody else that has more colors than you. They're not taking a break from relationships. They're only taking a break from you. Okay, don't buy into that. Well, we took a break and we came back to fools. Fools. Now, you take a break, you're gone. That means we're done for. Because you're not going to run out there into a forest and come back to me with garbage in your spirit and your soul. And definitely in your body some some mystery dis-ease and try to bring it to me absolutely not no as soon as you walk out it's done for you the kingdom doors will open up and i'll let i'll lay down the drawbridge and be like good gone take your bags your peasants okay and you go and uh you pilgrim yourself somewhere else go ahead leave don't come back you you're banded from this kingdom because i don't want you bringing your uh your pestilence in here again don't don't bring it back don't even know once you leave I'm just going to automatically assume I'm gonna automatically accept I'm gonna automatically write it on on the outside of the gates that you are not welcomed here because you're going to be bringing pestilence back and you're going to make my kingdom sick. It's just as simple as that. You got to stop thinking that start thinking that way. But yeah, y'all. Oh, you know, I, we took a break when we was in college, you know, and, she, and uh, you know, she left for about a few months and then we got back together and she was with the child. Like. <laughs> And our, you know, she told me, you know, the nine months, uh, the a couple of months, uh, what was it? Like, oh, uh, it was two months later that she was pregnant, and you know, I, I automatically assumed it was mine. And then, you know, because she was a child and I loved the girl, man, I got married to the girl. <laughs> and, they come, and they come to find out, you know, like several years later, the child is not yours. Like. <laughs> mindless drugs and donkey dunk that's drugs and donkey dunk. drugs will decept it will deceive and manipulate your instincts and your perception that's what drugs will do and drugs is in practically everything food can become drugs and the chemicals that are in it the the uh the ingredients as well because it's all chemistry when it's not organic right and it's gmo genetically modified organism Okay, we're favorite food coloring, MSGs, which is model sodium glutamate and high sugars, high fructose corn syrup. It's going to mess with your brain. You're not going to be able to see. Do you understand? So, therefore, it can also be considered as a drug. So, drug is in all kinds of things. You got your smoke drug and you got your drink drug. That's why it was illegal a long time ago. And that's why they use it for medicine to heal certain people. Because it's a drug, so it messes up your mind while you're trying to engage the outside world of man, boy meets girl. And then you get with the girl because donkey dunking is available and because, oh, she's a girl, I'm a boy, that's just what we do. And you do it and you get captivated in it and you become enthralled for something for the first few months or few years because it's fresh to you, it's new to you, any car. Whether it is raggedy, old, or new, because you've never driven it before, to you, it's new. To you, it's new. You never had that experience before. So, of course, you're going to drive, and sometimes you just get caught there. And don't have a higher perspective, don't have a higher principle to yourself. And therefore, uh, you end up in a situation where, here we go with the question, the answer, why do they do it anyway, Morpheus? That's why. That's why. And then come to find out the wheels fall off months later. Y'all not as happy as you need to be. Now you regret. Now you're thinking, man, if I was single all over again. No, uh-uh. Nah. -uh. Uh -uh. I thought about that 
I listen. I think about that when I watch you men in relationship. When I see y'all marriages, okay, I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to be that dude. Absolutely not. <laughs> I watch y'all and be like, no, nah, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, no. I'll be like, you know, I, I, I wish I was married. I wish I had a steady girlfriend like that. Oh, it's a no. I'm looking at thing. This guy, this guy got a burden on his hands. He don't have no idea. He has no idea. Y'all pushing. Uh, what do you call that a uh, grocery cartons around the store and she's standing there next to you you might have a, the kids are beautiful i never have no problem with them i never have beef with children but you know you have your child there and you be thinking man i should be going golfing right now sports game is playing i saw i'll be thinking of, we're not going listen when i go to the store right and, I, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go there <laughs> i got senses senses here i go to the store right I'm getting ready to go make plans. I'm getting ready to head out of town. I'm getting ready to just be a man and live my life. Going to uh, meet a beautiful girl, you know, somewhere across. And just go play, do a competition on PlayStation or something like that. Live my life and enjoy myself. I'm going in there to get a pack of something for myself. Some water, some good food, things I like to eat. Go home, sit down and enjoy it. Or share it with a companion that'll be there. Somebody like that. Y'all in there in the grocery store with the grocery list in your hand, carrying her purse. Like, <laughs> you got 20 minutes longer than what you really want to be there, right? And, <laughs> like, like, it's just miserable. And no happiness in faith. I'm like, hey, how you doing today, brother? Yeah, what's up? How you doing? Like, oh, man. This dude is dragged out. Dragged out. But you just, you signed up for it. You signed up for it. Now, here's the catch. You, you, you would be asking me this question. Morpheus, you said you all about family. You said you all about children. You're all about the future of America. How could you be about the future of America if you're talking about this? Okay. If you haven't got the memo yet, I'm going to give it to you because I put all the pieces together. And I'm sorry that you think that way. And I apologize that your intelligence isn't filtering out the information properly. So I'm going to adjust it for you with this screw. <laughs> okay. The future is pretty much going to be uh, it's going to fail because of getting into the relationship with the wrong information. If women and men held off properly and did not uh, give away all the sticky adhesive to the wrong people and did make the and did make the proper decisions as they need to, then therefore their children that they might have or might have currently will have the potential to be in a relationship that could possibly last. So it is for the future and it is for the people. And it definitely will help out men and women to find a good companion instead of accepting the lowest hanging fruit. See, the lowest hanging fruit in the Western civilization is because, oh, they only make so much money a year. Oh, they're too short. Or, oh, he's black. Or, oh, he's white. Oh, he's Mexican. He's Asian. I can't get with him. That's the that's the uh, that's the principle in the Western civilization. So it's bound to fail. And she's going to jump from you to the next boat, to the next boat, to the next boat, to the next boat. And then the children are going to be in the middle because, of course, most times your court system is going to say the child's going to be with the mom while the mom is going around everywhere and the child's right there suffering with her. OK, so that's something that we should not approve of, but it is and it happens all the time. And it's not going to stop and nor are we going to ever be accountable for our actions if we're going to it like I've just described to you. Thinking less or what you say, thinkless, not thinking. Because it's not a future endeavor anymore. You know, and then you have women who say, well, because I'm 30, I want to be with the guy who's 30. That's another very stupid move because he's not your 30. And listen, listen, a woman's age is not a man's age. Be done with it. Be done with it. You, you got to you got to understand that her age is not his age. It's because you're 19. Don't mean you need to be with a 19 year old. It don't happen like that because his reality is different than her reality. And so that's still going to fail. You know, smart people in the old days, it was a 20 year old girl that would get with a 30 year old man. Because he had his life together and he knew something. He's at her level now because he's slow to the upstart. Women start earlier than men. They already have a full throttle before you even push the gas, before you even push the gas pedal. Okay? 
So therefore, he needs time to catch up and get himself together because he aged slower. He does things a little slower. It's a little bit harder for men because they are a little bit, they are disenfranchised and they're not as fortunate as women are. So therefore, it don't work out like that. Then you still find men, whoa, you know, she's 42 and I like her, but I'm 32. But, ooh, she's a good looking mother for me. Well, that's what, it, if that's what floats your boat, you know, it, it's, well, I'm happy for her that she's able to be Stella and find love all over again. And you're, you know, you look this little bitty frog who don't know yourself yet. I mean, that's where you want to go, do it. But the future is either, either bright or dark for some of us. And most times the colors aren't here. If, if there were colors, would we deal with what we are dealing with on your newspaper? If there were colors, would we be dealing with the nonsense of a broken family? Would we ever have this discussion if the colors were there? Would they be a such thing as divorce and broken relation? If anything, everybody be excited. Be like, man, I can't wait to get married. I can't wait to be in this long term relationship with this woman because we're going to be steady with each other. No, nope, it don't work like that. It don't work like that because the westernized new way of thinking now is, oh, you know, we just do it to do it and that's it. No commitment. Nothing like that. You'd be like, well, Morpheus, then why do you do it? <laughs> it's like, why? You say, why? Well, there's, there's a two-sided dime to this. Two-sided dime. Okay? Every person that I meet, I give them a white piece of paper. Okay? And it's their measure of how far they are capable of going. I don't judge. I'll just say, okay, this is what I stand for. This is my principle. You know, I've discussed before, right? And I'll give you this white piece of paper and I'll walk away. You'd be like, what is this? You say, what is this? But no, you write down what you want to do. You tell me what you want to do and we'll go with that. <laughs> we'll go with that. So therefore, if she's going to stick, she'll stick. You know, that means when I, what I mean is, is psychological. Okay. And psych psychological and metaphysical. That means this. If a person is going to be there, they will be there because they want to and because they have what it takes. They got the energy, they got the chemistry, they got the mindset, and they have the motivation on their own. If you feel like you have to mold a person for them to be there, here we go. Here we go. If you feel like you got to be this guy who's keep working on this, uh, this old, over ancient high mileage vehicle. Okay. And you like wasting your time like that as a hobby, you know, good luck for you. Okay, then, then maybe that might work out for you. But if you want to save your time, you want to save your life, you value you. You want to get somewhere fast. You want to make sure that you are going to be successful. Okay, then uh, you don't want to sit there and try to waste your time molding something and putting something together. You'll say, well, you have to do that if you're going to get with a 21 year old girl because she's not experienced. Actually, what you don't understand is someone who is a lot older than that have been there done that and they are the 170,000 mile car the 20 year old girl maybe uh what do you say maybe 54,000 or less or something like that you know fresh to smell the new leather and stuff like that and here's the thing they still have not been around everywhere where they can be uh what do you call that they're not quite manipulated they're not distorted as, as older women may be and is okay they're not like that so therefore, they will learn something, then not learn something where they will sit back and be like, hmm, what's going on here? With all the energy, whatever mindset that they have, they still keep their eyes open on the possibility of say, OK, this is what a man's supposed to be. This is how, OK, this is how it's supposed to be done. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there has been too many times, of course, because we're in the Westernized civilization where they come across men who aren't raised correctly so they end up running into these type of men who's going to waste their time boys who are still just boys because of bad decisions and the woman gives in to the temptation so she wastes her time with someone who's already a waste okay so it become ill-advised and become nervousing for some older wiser women who knows what time of day it is are wiser men because those women end up coming across the wrong type of guy who don't have his perspective in place because it's very rare, just like it is rare for uh, men to find a virtuous woman. It's rare for a woman to find a man who is going to be the proper protector lover and going to take care of her the right way when she's that age without trying to take advantage. All right, because men don't get the memo as they need to because they're being raised in broken homes and they're being taught 
They're being programmed of what a man's supposed to be, and they're not being led as to what a man's supposed to be by another real man who is a proper guidance in their life and tell them what the perspectives are. So therefore, they end up ruining the 21 year old girl's life eventually or end up getting her pregnant and leaving her. She's like, hey, I'm with this baby. What's going on? I can't find a good man. But she listen, often the girls that I have talked to, they are already primed and ready at that time to find somebody who's going to at least be there, at least be uh, committed. So, OK, you're going to be here, then be here. Don't play games. Are you going to be serious? And they're looking for it. But unfortunately, some men grow up too slow. Because what happens is they end up meeting their auntie or their mom. And her mom will say this. Her mom will say, oh, you're 21. Don't be with that. Uh, uh, don't be with that 30 year old guy. You should be with the be with the 23 year old guy who barely knows himself. Who don't he don't have nothing established. Who can't even pay his. Uh, he can't even pay his car notes on his Subaru yet because he just wanted to show off. Right. Just Oh, I got the Subaru. Look at it. Oh. You know, look at the look at the way it sounds. So he's still, he can barely pay the payments off of it. But yet your mom wants you to be with her, with him. Why? Because he's 23. That's all your mom is thinking. Well, he's 23. You're 21. So you should stick with him. So two blind mice can lead each other and hurt each other at the same time. That is very that's that's some very good intelligence from a superior people of the westernized world. We are that advanced, but we're that slow. Really? When the 30 year old has something else to offer, he has more than that to offer and he has his mind on straight and he has a little perspective to himself. He may not be as wise as a 40 year old, but at least he has something that can be dependable and he knows what he's dealing with when it comes to the 21 year old girl because now they're at the right pace with each other. Now they're at the right pace with each other. A 23 year old is not going to be at the right pace with a 21 year old. What kind of luck you think you're trying to play with? That's playing Russian roulette. That's gambling with your life. And as a matter of fact, you are making the 21 year old girl gamble with her life and her future because you're so smart. So they end up failing. And then guess what happens? She ends up coming right back home to mommy at 22 with the child. And now she's stuck. Now she's in the rut because mom said, no, you should be with the 23 year old guy because he's 23 years old. <laughs> my goodness it's a mess it's a mess when y'all get your head on straight then things everything else is going to be straight you know when you get your head straight and you do the math when you put your head where it's supposed to be like, okay i understand okay i need to reach higher the the fruit is up there the fruit is the fruit is not going to be something i can just reach out and grab it and it's there so when listen when i meet people the fruit is very high this the standards is high not meaning my standard, the standard of what we need to succeed. Because I either say, yeah, I like that or no, I don't like that. And oftentimes when they show me who they are through the white piece of paper, oh, this is what you capable. Of, it becomes it just it's a it's a disaster. It's a disaster. Because they go by tradition, they go by what the mommy told them. They go by what, no, oh, you know, my dad said this. So I think I'm like, what do you think? What do you because life tells you something differently. You oftentimes you realize that reality tells you differently than what other people tell you. Your parents and stuff like that. Like, well, that's not what my parents said. Yeah, that's what they said. But reality is showing you something different to talk to your instincts to tell you otherwise. Sometimes you're most successful when you leave the house and you don't turn around. Sometimes you're most successful when you uh, when you clear out your so-called words of your mommy or your daddy out of your subconsciousness and you clear it out sometimes you're more successful you know what i ignored my dad and i was i succeeded if i listened to my mom i would be stuck i'd be stuck <laughs> i'll be struggling right now because <laughs> it's because it's not like it used to be i'm not saying for most mothers or fathers or parents and stuff like that i'm talking about because the world has changed people are thinking differently they're not thinking as straight as they used to because if there was, we'll be more successful than we are failing, but we're failing more than succeeding. And the rat wheel hasn't stopped. So the fruit don't fall that far from the tree. Didn't I tell you that in the beginning of the audio? The fruit don't fall too far from the tree. So you can't help but be awakened and receive the red peel. So again, it has nothing to do with me and what I write on the white piece of paper. It's the way that the society is. So if it's going to be to the point where she, you know, 
<laughs> you know, the, the, the trick is I was thinking about something for a moment here. I can imagine I give her a white piece of paper. She'll take it. She'll pull it out of my hand and throw it to the floor. And she'll pull out a paper of her own. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be like, okay, let's work with this and see what happens. And it just might work. It just it just might work. It just might work. But that that don't happen at all. Uh, because that expression means uh, that expression mean that each person brings baggage to the table. They're going to bring their own type of uh, mentality, frustration and whatever that they've been taught. So with a white piece of paper, getting a chance to know her. OK, I'll be able to see what type of person that she is. You see, so I begin to understand her. So therefore, if there's going to be a future, it will be a future. If not, then I'm able to read it right there in plain piece of paper, psychologically, mentally, spiritually, metaphysically. So therefore, I don't fail myself because if it's going to survive, it's going to survive. Leon C. A.K.A. Morpheus. And I know you got something out of it and you probably just got it now several months later, a couple of years later. But let me know that you got it by liking, sharing and subscribing and get that book 2020 America Rise or Fall Hard and keep giving this bottle to more people around you.